Hi everybody, welcome back to another Once Upon a Point. We are going to be jumping way back now. Uh, the last one I did was how I joined Miami City Ballet as a soloist, but I want to go back to New York City Ballet because we have barely even touched the surface there. So the previous one that I did there was uh, I think Peter Martin's full length Romeo and Juliet, which if you missed I will link both of those actually in a card. But So we're going to jump way back to that. So that was uh, May of 2007. I was 18. That premiered, I think we did our Saratoga season where I think I debuted um, this, the soloist in Stars and Stripes of the Short Regiment. Um, I'll insert a couple of photos here. That was my other big role I did as an apprentice um, or new core member at that point. So then we went on summer break and then we came back for the next season, which was going to be my first full season as a core member. The previous Nutcracker, I think, which again is another once upon a point, I did all 46 shows of Snow and Spanish Core, which was quite a feat, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> yeah, wasn't easy. But so the next year, you know, you kind of do these things gradually. I thought, well, maybe I'll do you know, marzipan core, or I'll get to do one of the dolls, or, you know, a smaller solo. So casting went up, or the rehearsal schedule went up, and I was slated to learn lead marzipan, which I did end up doing, and then it said uh, Nutcracker, Morgan, and Angle, Tyler Angle, which meant the pot of So my second Nutcracker, <laughs> I started learning Sugar Plum, and I just remember, like, completely freaking out about that um, because I was, I think I just turned, yeah, just turned 19. And so I just thought, oh, I'm doing Sugar Plum my second car. So we went into rehearsals with Meryl Ashley and Sean Lavery. Um, they taught both Tyler. I think actually Tyler had done it already. I think he'd done the previous year. Um, and I, I also knew the other new Sugar Plum that year was Sarah Mearns. So it was me and Sarah Mearns. We debuted the same year. So um, I remember the first day, you know, Meryl and Sean, Sean Lavery is no longer with us, but Meryl, you know, still to this day, she is like stickler for technique. So I was slightly terrified because it was going to be Meryl. So I just remember learning it. And, you know, I grew up on that video of Macaulay Culkin, uh, the Nutcracker of New York City Ballet with Darcy Kistler and Damien Wetzel doing the pas de deux. And I just remember like walking out learning it and going, I'm actually doing this, you know, it was so cool. Um, and so it was, it was a great rehearsal process. It was very tough. That is a very hard pas de deux for those of you that don't know. I mean, it's not the hardest version I've ever seen, but it's one of those pas de deux that's totally hit or miss. Um, I'm actually rehearsing it right now for, for Miami City Ballet. And, and it's like, oh yeah, this is a pas de deux where I think there was a count done at one point where like there's 13 places it could go totally wrong. Like there's no in between, it's either hit or miss. I mean, they're flying shoulder sits. There are these one-handed catch pirouette things. There's the little end uh, sliding disc thing. It's a disc, in case anybody's wondering, where you step onto this disc that gets pulled and it's like you get pulled in arabesque. And so all these little places in this pas de deux that can go wrong. Um, and so it's, it's tough and your left leg, I think your left leg in particular takes a beating. And then I started doing the solo with Meryl, um, by myself. Uh, the, what's nice about Balanchine's Nutcrackers, if you've never seen it, Sugar Plum does her solo at the top of the act. So it's like you, the opening with the angels, then she does the solo, then all the divertissements come on. So that's really nice. <laughs> By the time you get to the pas de deux, you've already done the solo. The male has no solo, so it's just pas de deux coda, um, which also presents an issue when you go and guest somewhere and they do it like everyone does it normally, pas de deux, solo, solo, coda. It's like a beast and a half. But it's very nice that you don't have to do your solo within that setting. You get to do it at the top of the act and it's done um, in a different costume. So, and that solo's pretty hard as well. Um, it's just one of those solos that just doesn't seem to end. If anybody's ever done Sugar Plum, it's just like, when is this gonna be over? It's kinda like the Aurora solos. You're like, can we hurry this along, please? But I just remember doing these steps and like, oh my gosh, I'm doing Sugar Plum. So things went along and I also started to rehearse Marzipan, uh, which for me, actually, Marzipan was harder because Marzipan is totally 100% technique. 
Like it's like you have to point your feet and like like hit a pirouette and hop some point and attitude front and back and gargly odds. I mean, it's just it's nasty. And marzipan is one of those things that the audience just is like nothing. They have no idea how hard it is. So I remember learning both of those that year. I also was still in snow. I got bumped up to flowers instead of Spanish core because um, typically the apprentices do Spanish core and then the core members do flowers. So I was doing snow, flowers. I was also the grandmother and party scene again, marzipan lead, and sugar plum. All that, all in my second nutcracker. So Tyler and I rehearsed, 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 rehearsed. I think I debuted marzipan like second, second show. I mean, I did marzipan really early because there were a lot of people out that year. So I think there were like five of us who did the entire rotation of 46 shows. Um, let's just say I've done marzipan quite a few times. Um, and I'm too tall for it here. So that's really exciting. I'm not doing it here. Then, but then what was so odd is the casting went up. I think I debuted Sugar Plum third week. That sounds about right. But casting went up and I was scheduled to do it with Gonzalo Garcia. Hadn't rehearsed with him. It was like Tyler and I had been going along all this time. And then I guess Peter was like, well, let's see how she does with Gonzalo. So my debut show was going to be with a partner that I had never danced with and never rehearsed with. And I think we had, what, like a week maybe? So that was incredibly odd. I still to this day don't know why that happened. So Gonzalo and I got in a studio and it was fine. I'm better suited to the taller partners because while I am 5'5", five five and I would say Gonzalo's maybe... 5'9"-ish, maybe 5'10". Um, I'm six feet on point because of my long arms, my long legs, and my long feet. So I think what we soon realized is that I was way too tall for Gonzalo, even though he's taller than me, simply because of my proportions. So I did the debut show with him, which was fine. I remember being so nervous, like so nervous, because it's such an iconic role. You know, especially, you know, Nutcracker is New York City Ballet's bread and butter. Like, that is their big one every year. It's the biggest moneymaker. It's what they are iconically known for, George Balanchine's version. And in that green tutu, everybody knows that green tutu. So it's it was terrifying. Um, and again, knowing all those places it could go wrong in the Parada, slightly, slightly worrisome. But it went fine. But then what was so weird is, you know, Peter was happy. And then the very next week I was scheduled to do it again with Tyler. I did my debut show with Gonzalo and I never did it with him again. And I have no idea still why that happened. I think maybe it was Gonzalo's first year at New York City Ballet. And so they were testing to see who he looked good with and what partners. Obviously now he dances a lot with Megan Fairchild, Tyler Peck, Sterling Hilton, who are all... Um, about my height, but shorter, have shorter feet and shorter proportions in terms of their height on point. So, um, but he dances a lot with them. And so I did my debut with Gonzalo and that was it. Never did it again. Um, and so Tyler and I in our, our, our first show together, but it was my second show. It did not go to plan. <laughs> there was a last prom, it was fine. But the last promenade, what happens is you go up in arabesque normal first arabesque and then you promenade and then you change hands same leg go around change hands same leg go around so by this time your right leg is like shot and I think somehow I missed his hand and I had to do like a back suit to new into the it was fine nobody would have known but I was not happy with it being 19 years old every mistake was like a catastrophe um, that's something you learn as you get older like mistakes on stage it's okay, like keep going. But when you're young, it's like the world has come to an end. So I remember Peter coming back and the curtain came down and he made us do the promenade like right then. Like, oh, let's do this again. And it was fine at that point. But um, I was really upset. And I remember in the coda, Tyler, because, you know, the boy does turns. And I guess maybe Tyler had a fumble on his turns. and But I never saw it because I had he starts his turns when you're going off stage. So I heard him say, uh, dance like a six-year-old. And I thought he said, I'm tired of dancing with a six-year-old, meaning me. 
And it turns out he said, I'm tired of dancing like a six-year-old. So I did the entire finale with him thinking he was mad at me when he wasn't. Um, but I just remember being really devastated. It was not our best show. It was not our best show. It was fine. And then I ended up doing a third one with him that was great. So that's the other thing, dancers. Typically, <laughs> professionals will say this, typically the first show is always the worst. <laughs> and then you kind of build. Or for me, sometimes it's just the second show that's the worst. Like you do really well, you, you do your first one, and then the second one, and then the third one. So don't always get so beat up about a show and how it goes and it wasn't as good and da-da-da. It's going to happen. It's live theater. That's part of it. So we missed the promenade and whatnot. And then our third one was actually on Christmas Eve. And that one was great. So I got to do it on Christmas Eve uh, with Tyler. And so that was my first year doing Sugar Plum. I got three shows, which is a lot for a newbie. Typically you only get like two, sometimes only one. And I got to do three at 19. It's such an iconic role. It's kind of like Aurora. And I just can't believe I got to do it. I still to this day can't believe I did it my second Nutcracker. Um, but the other, the other reality check guys, is that going back to the debut with Gonzalo, I remember coming off stage from the bows and our company manager was standing in the wings and he said, oh, beautiful show, Katie. Uh, So-and-so's out tonight, so I need you for flowers for the evening show. So there was no like standing there luxuriating in my wonderful debut sugar plum. I was like, okay, that's nice. I need you tonight in the core. So go be flower number three from the left. <laughs> so that night I did flowers. So you can't ever, you know, especially at New York City Ballet or even here Miami City Ballet, like the amount of people and the ballets that you do, it's it's not about like I did my sugar plum and now I'm going to rest for three days. No, tonight I need you in the core. Like get over your crown, take off your tiara, and go put on your flower costume because <laughs> you need it in the core. So, and that was good because that kept... It keeps your head right. So that night I did, you know, that day was sugar plum in the matinee and grandma and flowers in the evening show. Reality check. Uh, so that's basically that story. Again, there's no like super, you know, crazy stories from that other than the fact that I did it, rehearsed it with Tyler, did one show with Gonzalo, and then went back to Tyler. Like I still don't understand what that was about, but such is life. Um, and both guys are incredible. So. That is that story. Um, if you guys like this series, I think what next happened, I'll have to like go back through my rep, but um, I will keep this series going and continue it here into Miami City Ballet. I did do drop the next year, so we'll get to that eventually. Um, but that was my sugar plum story. If you missed the video of me currently, a couple of clips rehearsing, it's more of the coda, of sugar plum, etc. It's right down there. You can click it to watch. Love you guys so much, and I'll see you next time.